When you're adjusting the brightness and contrast of your image, how can you be 100% certain that you're maintaining detail in both the highlights and the shadow areas? In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the histogram and the clipping warnings in Luminar Neo to do exactly that. Hi, I'm Darlene, the Digital Photo Mentor, and I teach beginning and intermediate photographers like you how to improve your work from capturing the camera all the way through to the end of the editing process. So if you're ready to learn how to make sure you have full detail in your images, let's get started. Luminar Neo has a couple of tools built in to help you make sure that you maintain detail in your highlights, and your shadow areas of your image. The first one is the histogram. If it's currently not showing on your version of Luminar Neo, just go to the view menu and choose show histogram. Then it will show up here right above the crop tool. Similar to the histogram in your camera, which helps you determine and set the exposure. Likewise, when you're doing photo editing, you can use the histogram to adjust the brightness and contrast to maintain full detail. By default, you'll see that it shows red, green, and blue, or all of the colors combined. When you click on the histogram, it toggles through each of the colors individually, red, green, blue, and finally, grayscale. I recommend using the default, or all the colors, or the grayscale one. What this histogram is telling us is that this image is slightly overexposed. There's a lot of information over here on the right, where white and highlights live, and there's very little to none on the right hand side of the graph where black lives. So we're going to use the tools in Luminar Neo to fix that. But before I hop into develop raw, I want to also turn on the clipping warnings. You can do that a couple of different ways. Just by hitting J on your keyboard, you'll see the clipping warnings show up. Red indicates highlights that are clipped or blown out, meaning no detail. And blue is shadows or blacks with no detail. In this case, there aren't any. So now we can use that information to correct the highlights and the exposure. The other way to activate the clipping warnings is by hovering over the graph and just clicking these little circles. So you can actually do the highlights and the shadows independently that way. I'm going to use J. Now when I open develop raw and scroll down to the curves tool, You'll notice that there's the histogram here as well, and they match. So both of these are helpful depending which tool you're using. Once you get out of develop raw, this histogram will continue to show. So to fix this problem, I could bring the exposure down and I can also bring the highlights down. So I'm just going to keep going until I get rid of all of the clipping warnings. Now you see there's no warnings showing in the sky and you'll notice that the histogram, the information has moved more to the center of the graph. But there's still nothing over on the left. There's still no black. So this is where I'm going to use the curves tool. I did an entire video on how to use curves. Check out that video using the link if you want more information on curves. By just dragging this bottom slider here, it's equal to grabbing the left edge of the histogram and tucking it in a little bit. So you start to see, if I go a little bit more, I start to get blacks in the trees clipping. My goal and my recommendation is to not have any highlights or whites clipping, but you do want to have a little bit of blacks going off the edge of the graph. The reason being is the more black you have in your image, the more color saturation you will also have. So you don't need to touch the saturation slider, just add a little bit more black. So this is about the right amount of clipping. Now that I have that adjusted, I can do any other adjustments I want, such as white balance and so on. Then turn the clipping warnings off. And once you close the develop tool, you still have this histogram as a reference and you can see that there's a little bit clipping over here on the left, but nothing clipping on the right. That is the objective. Let's look at another example with a different challenge. By looking at this histogram, what it tells me is that the image is very flat. Again, there's nothing over on the left, 
but this time there's nothing over on the right either, which means that there's no black or white and everything is sort of squished into the middle into various tones of gray. So we're gonna go down to the curve again and tuck it in on both sides and we'll start to see some clippings. Of course, I need to turn on my clipping warning, so J key. I wanna make sure I'm not losing detail in his feathers, but I wanna give it a little bit more contrast. So I'm gonna let it clip and then come back up here to the highlight slider and just drag it down until I lose that highlight clipping warning. The amount of black clipping is acceptable to me. If I think it's too far, I can back it off a little bit or punch up the shadows a tiny bit. Finally, I'm just going to make a bit more of an S curve here to add some more contrast. And I'm gonna take it a bit more extreme. And you can see what's happening on the histogram. The information is now being spread out, meaning we are covering it more of the range from black to white. So whenever you're editing, whether you are dealing with an image that's overexposed, underexposed, too contrasty or not enough contrast and flat, always use the histogram and the clipping warnings to make sure that you have a target and you know what your goal is when you're editing your image. Because then even if your monitor is not calibrated or is not perfectly balanced, you at least have a good idea of whether or not the brightness and detail of your image is correct. In this final example, you can see that the sky and a little bit of this chair have some parts that are clipping. So now let's look at the individual graphs. You'll notice that on the red histogram, there's a spike on the right, so that's the chair. So the chair is losing detail. Green looks okay in the highlights. And then there's a spike on the blue, right? As you would expect that color to appear in the sky. I hope you're starting to see how this all comes together and is making some sense for you. So with the clipping warnings on, I'm just going to add a little bit of black until I have a tiny bit of clipping. And then I'm going to pull these highlights down and maybe the overall exposure a little bit. And now that I've done that, increasing the shadows so I don't have quite as much clipping. So we can see that I've gotten rid of most of the highlights, but there's still one on this chair seat here. If I drag the highlights all the way down, I'm still not getting all of it, and the rest of the image is starting to look a little bit flat, and it's going too far. So instead of doing that, I'm going to keep the highlights at a moderate amount, just enough to take care of the sky, and we're gonna deal with a chair with a different tool. Once I've closed the Develop Raw tool, I'm just going to open it again and take the highlights down further until I get rid of that clipping problem on the chair. And then I'm just going to mask it, in this case, using the paintbrush, to just paint it in to the areas of the chair that I want this tool to apply. So just the arms of the chair and the bright spots. Now you can see if I toggle this tool off and on, it's just affecting the chair and picking up that last bit of highlight. Just to review, let's look at the histogram again. So it's well spread out. There's good detail. There's nothing clipping in the highlights. There's a little bit of clipping in the shadows. We can look at each of the graphs separately. You can see there's still a little bit of blue clipping. Otherwise, it looks pretty good. To solve the blue, if you're still concerned about that, on an image like this, of course, we can go to the color tool in the luminous sliders and just darken the blue. See how that's affecting the mountains and the sky? Let's look at the blue histogram. See how that's working on the blue? Very nicely. Let's take a look at the full before. You can see the image is a little bit overexposed and very high contrast and where I'm at now in terms of tone. I've mentioned the keyboard shortcut a few times for the clipping warnings and I recommend that you memorize that as well as a few others. If you need help with that, you can download my free Luminar Neo keyboard shortcuts PDF. The link to get it is in the description area below. So now that we've discussed the histogram and the clipping warnings, let me ask you this. 
Do you find these tools are an essential part of your photo editing? I sure do. Drop me a comment below and let me know how important they are to you on a scale of 1 to 10. I'm going to rate them a 10. If you want more photo editing tips, just watch this video now or join me every week for my weekly photo editing live stream. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time. Take care.